Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to check out how Cropout would run on an Android device. So I went ahead and packaged the game as a .apk and in this video we will be playing the game on my Samsung S10 to test out and see how it runs. And if you don't know what Cropout is, basically some of you may have watched my previous video. Cropout is a free top-down real-time strategy or RTS game that you can download from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. It is a completely free open source RTS game template that you can build build upon, break it apart, and learn from. It has support for PC, mobile, and console controls. And so today we're gonna to be putting the mobile controls to the test and see how it runs on the Android device. You can check out my previous video about testing this out on the PC. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But in this video, I'm particularly interested in how well this game will run, how responsive the controls will be. Now before we get into the video, I want to really quickly tell you about my multiplayer survival game course. Learn how to make a multiplayer survival game inside of Unreal Engine 5. We create things like an inventory system, crafting system, an open world map that uses PCG to procedurally spawn all the foliage on the map, complete building system, harvesting system. There's over 50 plus hours of course content. So head over to smartpoly.teachable.com and get an early access discount on the course. The price of the course will be raised later on, so make sure you don't miss out. So check the link in the description below or head over to smartpoly.teachable.com to learn more. So as you can see here, I've loaded up the game on on my Android device. This is the Samsung S10. So I've packaged the game as a .apk file, which is quite a bit of a process. If you've ever built a game for mobile, especially Android, you have to download all the dependencies, things like the Android SDK, all that stuff. So there's quite a bit of setup that you have to do in order to package this game for Android. Now you might be able to download this game from the App Store. I haven't searched up to see if anyone else has uploaded it, but if not, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to the .apk APK file that I package so that you guys can download it. You can sideload it to your Android device and test the game out. But yeah, here it is on the phone. So as you can see, it's got the icon. It has everything set up which is pretty cool. So yeah, you can go ahead and open it up. It's pretty much the same. So you got your main menu here. One neat thing is that it can actually be played in the landscape or portrait mode. So it's not restrictive to either or. So you can turn your phone any orientation and it will adjust accordingly. So yeah, I actually click continue here and resume my previous game that I was playing. So yeah, let's talk about the controls. So first up, the controls are pretty simple. You have your simple pan around by just using your finger to zoom in and out. You can either zoom using both your thumbs or you can sort of pinch the screen with two fingers. It's kind of not as sensitive as you'd expect. So you really have to zoom in a couple of times. Now there might be some sort of sensitivity control for this inside of Unreal Engine, but unfortunately there isn't any sort of in-game setting to adjust that. Now, one thing to note is that you can actually hold your fingers in that zoom position and it will auto zoom in and out for you. So that's a pretty nice feature. So yeah, all the controls are set up with the enhanced input system. And the neat thing about it is that you add all the inputs for each action. So say for example, moving the camera around, you can add them per platform or per input device. So what Cropout has set up is controls for PC input, such as the mouse, console input, such as the controller, and then the touch screen input for you know mobile devices. Now the game runs pretty smooth on my Samsung S10. I can zoom up here and we're getting a pretty decent frame rate. I don't think I have any debug controls or tools to show you what my frame rate is, but it looks pretty smooth. The graphics are pretty simple, so it's not like it'd be a demanding sort of game to run. So you can open up the build menu and place various different structures. You have the build menu and it's pretty much the same process as on PC. Now the little place menu here though is tiny, so it's actually kind of hard to click on the different options button. So I'm wondering if you can make it so that depending on the platform, you can scale up certain widgets to specific sizes. I'm gonna have to check out how they set up the widgets because it'll be interesting to see how they have it set up differently between PC and mobile. In Cropout, it seems like the widgets are sort of the same scale as on PC. So it looks nice, but things like the options menu, the pause menu, it could be a little bit bigger. But yeah, the gameplay is pretty smooth. Everything runs fine. And again, this is all using blueprints inside of Unreal Engine 5. And I'm actually wondering how they did the lighting on this because Lumen isn't supported on mobile devices. So, so I'm wondering what the settings are and how it's different depending on the different platforms. But there's a lot of stuff that you have to think about when making a game that is cross-platform or is played on more than just the PC. There's a lot of little details that you have to be aware of. But yeah, check this out. So you can turn the phone in portrait mode and the game will flip right over. All the widgets are set up properly, even in portrait. 
So for example, I can open up the build menu and you can see I can still scroll across this list of structures. It doesn't get cut off on the right there. But yeah, I can exit to the main menu and there's actually an extra button here on the main menu. It's a little donation button. I didn't add this at all. I think it's the creator of the sample project that set this up with his Google Play ID and all that stuff. But yeah, we can resume the game and you can see the save and load system works fine. Like I mentioned before, the pause menu is very tiny on mobile, so it's very hard to adjust things like the music and SFX volume sliders. But yeah, this is pretty much just crop out running on a mobile device. Uh, the entire map is procedurally generated and it seems to work fine on mobile. In fact, I can create a brand new game. So let me show you how this works and how it's generated when you click play. So I can click new game and that will override my current save file. I'll just click continue. Yeah, so it takes a couple of seconds to load, but it procedurally generates the entire island shape and then the location of all the resources, the trees, the bushes, the rocks, and even the location of the town center. And in Age of Empires, I think they have more resource types. They have wood. Food, wood, stone, gold, maybe even iron. I can't remember if it was just gold or if they had any other resource types, but I think adding something like another resource should be pretty easy to implement in crop out since it'd probably just be another variable inside of the controller, but even another different structure type that costs different resources should be pretty easy and straightforward to implement. But anyways, that is going to be it for this video. I just want to showcase the game running on an Android device. Since I was able to successfully package the .apk file and sideload it onto my Android device. But yeah, if you guys want to check it out, I'll leave the link to the .apk file in the description below. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.